Right, okay, more complicated example this time. So again, I've started it up. I've got a start location and I've got an end location. Okay, this time I'm using physical distances. So pixels, how many pixels are they apart? So if I move a node, you'll see that the numbers update. Okay, so the costs are slightly different. Some of them are similar ones, but they've changed. Doesn't matter. I've added all the nodes to the open set. So they're all in white. So they're all open. My start node A, I've said my cost is not. So we're going to pick that one first. It's got two neighbours. So they're going to get highlighted. Okay. So we're going to look at B and G and calculate the costs. So again, this is trivial, the first one, because we're adding naught to the distances. Okay. So we put the costs in and we put the parents in. It's then going to pick... The smallest of those, which is B. Okay. As we visit a node, the one in yellow, it goes into the closed set. So that's A and B have now been visited. So C and H. So C, that's the cost from B. Add the cost to get to B plus the distance. Do the same for H. So the cost to get to B plus the distance to H. Right, that's it. That's all we do in Dijkstra continually. It's quite quick with small graphs. But as soon as you get large graphs, it can actually get quite slow. Right, so we picked the next smallest one, which was G this time. And you can see that its neighbours that were in the open set are H and M. M was the new one that we looked at. H, we'd already said that we visited that from B. Okay, but this time... It was cheaper to go from G. Okay, so where we got H, we have updated the parent and the costing. So we've actually found a quicker way of getting to H. That's the beauty of the algorithm. That's what it's supposed to do. Okay, but you only do that if a value is in the open set still. That's why it's important that they get marked off. Right, so we're going to pick one again and it looks like it will be H this time. So H has got two neighbours, calculate the cost to I and N from H. So that was good because we got a new cheaper cost for H. Okay, and that's now reflected in the distance to get to I and N. Keep going. C happened to be the next one. It's got a value for I. It was not cheaper. Okay, so we're still saying it was cheaper to get to H. You can see that physically it's a long distance there. So we calculate the D and we just keep going through that process. So we're, every time we visit a node, we're building up this closed set and we're reducing the open set by one each time. So we just keep going through. It's quite weird, it jumps around because it's just looking for the smallest cost. So which is the closest to the start location each time? Okay. Right, so we get to there, we've done B, so we've only got five locations left. So we've got L, Q, W, X, we haven't visited yet, still got an infinite cost. So you can always see which ones you haven't even looked at as neighbours. Okay, so we're going to pick, it looks like it'll be L. Oh no, it wasn't Q, Eric, you weren't looking properly. Um, yeah, 851854. Right, so it's picked R and W. Again, X still hasn't been visited, so we're going to pick L this time. R was no cheaper than getting from Q, so that's not going to be a route we look at. The next one's going to be, oh, very close, 994995. So it's going to be R. Now we've opened up the X as a neighbour, calculated its cost. Quite expensive from R. So W will get picked next. And when we do the neighbour calculation for X, it is no cheaper to go from W. Now we've exhausted the whole set except for the end node this time. And then we pick the end node, nothing else to explore so we can work backwards through the path. And you can see we've gone through that H. It was looking suspicious that H was going to help us. Okay, so we say R, so look at R is Q, look at Q was P. Look at P was O, 
Look at O was I. Look at I was H. Where's H? Look at H was G. And G was A. Null. That's the start point. So we can work the buff out. Okay. The only thing that's going to screw you up on this Dijkstra is your arithmetic. Okay. Got to be careful. We haven't got a calculator, so we have to double check. If you have to, on the paper, do 107 plus 119, which would be a horrible pair of numbers to add together, in my mind, anyway, do it like that. The examiner's not going to laugh at you. I know you might laugh at everyone, Lauren. A few people scribbling, a bit of long addition. You would have to do that as well. You're as bad as me. Okay? Don't. It's like when we're doing the um, hexadecimal. If you have to... Write down the number line, down to 15, and put F, E, D. There's no point in making a mistake if there's a simple way of doing it quick. Okay? All right, so that's Dijkstra. It's a method that will generally explore the whole graph, looking for its optimal route. Um, it is agnostic about where it is in relation to the end. But there is a slightly better way of doing it, and that's what A star does. Okay, so I'll stop the video there and we'll go through the same examples with A star.